on this episode of This Is Aussie Ag. We're headed across the Nullarbor to the west coast of Australia. We've been invited along by the Harvest Road Group, a diversified agribusiness covering various land types, locations and environments, from the Kimberley in the north to Albany in the south. We're here to meet the team to understand the role of people within their vertically integrated gate-to-plate beef business, an established and growing aquaculture brand, and emerging horticulture operations. As we landed in Perth, we headed down to the Swan River to meet the Chief Commercialisation Officer, Mark Wiedemann, to understand what he's got in store for us. We're really excited to be over here in Western Australia. I've never really looked at ag over in this side of the world. What is it about WA and the ag scene that makes you so passionate about it? From an industry point of view and a WA market point of view, there's such potential. So from a WA industry, there's obviously other big sectors and it really needs another key pillar and ag is primed to be that next big economic pillar. But then from a, a global demand for the types of quality produce that we can create in WA, WA is well located around the Indian Ocean to service those markets. And so Harvest Road is a relatively newcomer in the ag scene. What is the business? Yeah, ha- Harvest Road is sort of built on is there a real philosophy around our people, our values, and then everything we go and focus on is how do we build that full vertical integration uh, in that supply chain so we can bring the very best sustainable produce to the world. We've got some products in front of us, Mark, but how are Harvest Road diversifying in the ag space? Yeah, our core initially was beef. So we started with the key station and a beef processing. That's rapidly expanded. So we've now got over 3 million hectares in stations across the wider state. Next, our core business is getting into aquaculture. Uh, initially focused on the premium sector of shellfish and you'll see us sort of expand into other areas of aquaculture. And then as we look to diversify, because of the properties in which we own, we'll look at the highest and best use of land. So that's why you're starting to see us get into horticulture and other areas that uh, will come on the market. And I think what's so exciting about this is we've got consumers across Australia and around the world that see our products every day, but actually we're going to take that back inside the farm gate out onto the ocean and see what actually happened. Yeah, so you'll get the full, uh, what we say, the conception to consumption experience. <laughs> so we're seeing the, the plate end of that, um, but really excited that you'll, uh, you'll go right to the supply chain and meet the people that make this happen. We thought we'd start you where it all began. Mindaroo Station is located 41 kilometres south of Oslo in the Pilbara region of Western Australia. It's the home of owners Andrew and Nicola Forrest and one of the first parts of the full vertically integrated supply chain. Managing the station up here and overseeing the broader extensive operations is the partnership of Hamish and Katrina. Yeah, well, welcome to Harvest Road. Oh, we're just at one of our stations, Mindaroo, and I've been here since 2016. I started as a bit of like a operations analyst, personal assistant to the general manager, and since then have taken on sort of co-managing the station here with my partner, Hamish. My name's Hamish Lee Warner, and I'm the general manager for the Harvest Road Northern Agribusiness. We look after all the stations between Carnarvon and just north of Halls Creek. And so for you guys, what are some of the priorities and key things you're trying to achieve here? Well, well, I think obviously one of them is um, people, like none of this happens unless you have a good team around you. With cattle here as well, that's also what we're here for. So we've put a lot into the genetics of our animals and that's been a really exciting thing for us all to be a part of. And obviously hand in hand with the animals is obviously animal welfare and that's something that we're really passionate about. What's the role of this station in the bigger Harvest Road story? We're based in the Pilbara at the moment. So in the last couple of years, we've purchased properties up in the Kimberley. So they're beautiful breeding blocks up there. Where we're based now has turned into more of a backgrounding property. So we bring progeny through from those stations, bring it here, put on, you know, a few kilos to then turn it off to our feedlot and processing plant down south. We're taking advantages of the change in season. So in the north, Kimberley's got a bit more reliable and high rainfall where we've got most of our breeders positioned. We're a bit later, so then they're coming on to a rising plain in nutrition, sort of dispersing them through this sort of west side of the Pilbara on the coast and down into the upper Gascoigne where we sort of aim to put a 100 to 150 kilos on them before we feed them into the supply chain. We also house the multiplier herd here as well. So that's basically breeding bulls that we can then use on those breeding properties, just making sure we get the traits that we want, make sure they're adapted to where they're living and, and get the most out of it. When it comes to the business, sustainability is obviously a core part of it. Like, what does sustainability actually mean to you? 
there's a lot to it really. Like, you know, whether it's through your people, obviously you want to be a sustainable business and you can't be sustainable unless you have the succession of people coming through. And that's something that we really work on to make sure that we can build a career here for people. And it's something that they want to stay with long-term. Obviously animals, again, running your animals sustainably and making sure that you're looking after them to get the best out of the next generation and the one after that. And then obviously the country to be able to care for them and be able to have a property that we're really proud of and it's a beautiful place in another hundred years time and that's our kind of goal. This country isn't just beautiful to see. It feels peaceful and emotional to be physically here at Mindaroo. Ben Dwyer has spent a lifetime in and around agriculture. It's in his blood. With sustainability front and centre in global conversations, I wanted to know what it means to Ben and the broader team. Harvest Road's vision is to have Western Australia's most sustainable produce to the world. What does that actually mean to you guys as a business? The sustainable piece is very important to us as a business and also to the owners. And it's not short-term sustainability, it's long-term generational sustainability. So we've got the task of making sure that we leave it in a better place than we found it. And Andrew and Nicola are very adamant that we do that. It's got to be sustainable from the animal's point of view and the whole of the environment and make sure we don't over-utilise a, a non-renewable resource, which is the land that we operate on. You know, it's not hard to go and jam out a, a profitable outcome out of any agricultural system once or twice, but it's hard to do it sustainably over generations. We've got generational assets that we're purchasing on behalf of the owners, and they're not really looking to build that supply chain and that sustainability for them. It's more for their grandkids and their grandkids' grandkids. So they've got a very long vision. I think Andrew and Nicola would like to leave a positive legacy for that. One thing I definitely have, have noticed and enjoyed is just how well your team gets on in that, that culture. Like it really is just a, a group of really good people. So how, how have you guys actually built that? I think the key is making sure that the team are all like-minded and they understand the vision and the goals that we've got. We're very clear on why we're here. So it's pretty easy to jump into the bed in the morning knowing that you've got that in front of you. And that hasn't changed for since I started. It's wonderful just knowing that you're producing something that sustains people every day of their life. One of the great things is it doesn't matter where you start with Harvest Road, whether you come into one of the stations as a Jackaroo or Jillaroo or you start as a pen rider in the feedlot, or you start down in Albany on oyster leases, we look for our rising stars and we nurture them along. You know, if there's someone that one of our managers thinks they're a real shining star, but they're just not quite the right fit in there, we'll try and place them where it works and show them a career path. Ag's a great space to be in and, you know, we try and grab as many of these gabby guys as we can and make sure that that gap year lasts for something like 30 odd years. We often hear that people are key to a business and here it was just so obvious. As Ben said, when they find a rising star, they back them. So the next morning, we met the team, including Andrew, who's one of their rising stars. Mindrew actually came with a close mate in 2017 and we've been fortunate enough to progress here in the company and, and it's opened up a lot of avenues and a future for me, hopefully. My fifth year here at Mindrew, my role here is just livestock manager. We've got a bull breeding program here, which we can see this morning. We're drafting a few bulls. I come as a first year jackaroo with a lot of aspirations and a, a big open mind. It's a very diverse industry and there's a lot of different avenues you can explore. Day to day, what are some of the things that you're responsible for? Oh, overall, it's general livestock health, animal welfare, looking at how we can live a sustainable future, I'm not flogging our country too much, but you still want to get the best out of your land. At the moment, whatever options arise, I'm, I'm willing to take on and to learn as much as I can and just broaden my experiences is my main goal at the moment. Southwest of Mindaroo, just outside the town of Carnarvon, is Brickhouse Station. Alongside being part of the beef production system, it's home to an emerging opportunity in horticulture. We're meeting with Saxon to understand what's the importance of horticulture to the region. I think there's something like 190 odd farms. That's a lot of families, you know, people going to school, shopping in the shops. It's part of the economy of Carnarvon. It's one of the drivers for the region. And that evolution of not just the region, but actually you guys coming in as a business here. Yep. How, how have you guys approached it? We approached it because the opportunity was there to approach it because the Gascoigne Food Bowl initiative, which was to drill for more water and in finding more water, we could then open up more land. We put our hand up for a sort of one gigalitre of the four. I started two and a half, three years ago with clean slate in front of me. You know, where we're at now is the first plantings of three crops. We've got our mangoes, sweet potatoes and agave. Yeah. And why have you guys chosen those as your three stars? So we were looking for a long-term tree crop. We know that mangoes grow well in Carnarvon. So that was a fairly easy choice. We were looking for a medium to short-term crop. That's our agave. That's a five to seven years harvest. And then we we're looking for an annual crop. 
to get some cash flow going. And sweet potato was our choice because there's not a lot of sweet potato growing in West Australia. It's all imported from over east. The Harvest Road are really the first broader business that's coming in. What do you see as the difference between like a family business and, and corporate? A family unit, in my view, is a, is a group of related people all working towards a common goal, striving towards that, thinking as one and communicating like that. A well-run corporate is just a group of unrelated people with a common goal, striving towards it and communicating just like that family unit would, and we do. Just how diverse the Harvest Road business is. How is that benefiting you guys in this establishment of the, the Hort side? Oh, it's, no, it's, it's great. We're probably the most integrated with our partial beef side of things is the sweet potatoes. We can rotate a summer sorghum crop or a winter oat crop and bale that up for a yard hay. The yards are only a few kilometres up the road. And when we clean the yards out, I bring all the manure and trodden straw and all that from the yards back and compost it here until it's ready to put back in the soil. So it's a circular economy. It was fascinating to see and learn how the beef and horticulture businesses complement each other. Another link in this supply chain is Coogin Downs, a finishing feedlot to our south, managed by Amanda Mewitt. So I'm Amanda Mewitt, welcome to Coogin. I'm the General Manager of Feeding Facilities. So I oversee Coogin Downs and I'm also overseeing any of um, Harvest Road's third party feedlots where we'll be custom feeding. So at the moment we're built for 20,000 head um, and then with our expansions of stage two and three, we'll be going to 40,000 head. And so once they arrive here, yeah. what does it look like for? They are inducted. They're given all their vaccinations. We're checking for all their health ailments. We're making sure that they're actually going to be fit for purpose for 100 day feeding. And from there, they are given the best nutritional rations twice a day. And we give them the best animal husbandry, which is best practice feed loving. An integrated supply chain mm -hmm. in Western Australia. What does that mean? What does it look like? It's unique. It's quite new to WA and we are pioneering integrated beef production in WA. I can grow my people, our cattle and our infrastructure to create something extremely large for WA. So that's incorporating all of Harvest Roads, Harvey Beef um, expertise to create the most amazing animal like we've got here. And they're all very quiet, aren't they? They are. Curious little buns. They are. We work really hard here at the feedlot on our animal health, animal welfare, animal behaviours, so that we have stress-free, relaxed cattle at all times. And as you can see, uh, I think we're doing a good job of it. You've spent a lot of time just in beef businesses. Yeah. You come into a much bigger business and a diversified ag yeah. company. What does that actually mean for you and how's it helping you in your life? It's, it's amazing. It opens up your eyes to what everyone's problems are. And for that, we're all in it actually together. We talk, we share our pain, our successes and our wins. You know, the best part about it is there's no siloing. We are one team working together for one strategic vision, and that's really success, profitability and longevity. As we've seen already, the logistics and supply of cattle all year round at a constant high quality is no easy feat. In charge of making sure that these cattle continue to come through the supply chain is Damien. So my role with Harvest Road is general manager of livestock, basically handling all the procurement and movements of livestock through the Harvest Road business, whether it be feedlots, through our backgrounding properties, uh, adjustment properties, but ultimately to end up at Harvey Beef down at Harvey. So you guys, what is, what is the goal of the beef operation here? Well, it's just to produce these quality cattle like standing behind us. I mean, WA is very seasonal. You hit your April, May, June periods where there's very few cattle movements and availability of cattle for sale and we have to still fill these pens week in, week out. So we're trying to work out ways to buy those cattle now and stack them and spread them out so we've got 12 months supply of cattle. And so for you guys, you're putting them into a, a branded product at the end. So how, how are you working together as a team to actually overcome that and make sure that you're hitting that consistency yep. in the end product? It all starts by having that you know, those, those parameters in place. At Harvey, we have to get that filtered back to this level into the feedlot and we have to then pass that information back onto our property managers to how to draft those cattle into those specifications so we're getting that consistency of carcass weights and, and all the carcass traits that we need. We've got to be clear in how we communicate that back to them and that specification um, so that gives them clear targets. It enables them to forecast that out to us longer term so we can plan and we know then where the gaps are that we have to fill with our external supply chain. The final part of this fully vertically integrated supply chain is of course the processing plant, or abattoir. It's generally one aspect of the livestock industry 
that many people don't like to think about. But in fact, it's a vital part, especially when it comes to quality and animal welfare. Well, the many outfits that there are <laughs> a, a trip with Harvest Rover. Wayne, can you tell us whereabouts are we and why am I dressed like this? <laughs> yeah. Well, you're at uh, the Harvey Beef Plant in the uh, southwest town, Western Australia, um, where we process good quality West Australian cattle, about 700 a day. So Harvey Beef uh, was started way back in 1919 and Mindaroo purchased the business in 2014 and later formed Harvest Road. In terms of your workforce here, can you tell us a little bit about the types of people and um, just how many staff you've got? Yeah, so we're, we've got a big workforce. We have around 800 staff. We have all sorts of trades and unqualified staff and technically qualified people. So yeah, we cater for, for everyone and we need everyone. And so why are you guys important to the WA beef industry? I guess we're, we're, we're pretty important, one, because of our scale. We process nearly half of the slaughter volume of cattle processed in Western Australia. We're also very targeted on the full range of cattle types. Sustainability is so important to the business across all areas. So how are you actually addressing it here at the site? A lot of things we're doing. Being efficient as, as, as part of being um, sustainable or using less resources for every kilo of meat. We have a covered anaerobic lagoon. And what that does is it treats our effluent and we turn that into methane. We use that methane to power about one third of our thermal heating requirements for the plant. Obviously, we're an industry that unfortunately uses a lot of plastic to keep the shelf life of the product. So we're very active in firstly ensuring that the plastics we do use are either recyclable or can be reused in some form. And ultimately, we want to use less plastic. So Animal welfare is a big one and yes. consumers really care about that. What are the steps that actually happen here on site to make sure that the product is as good as it can be? Obviously, the business we're in, animal welfare is absolutely critical. Without really high standards of animal welfare, we wouldn't have the social license to operate as not just Harvey Beef, but as the entire you know beef industry. We've done a lot of work in that sort of last 50 metres. We want the animals to have least stress experience through things like training of the staff and procedures for moving cattle, but also some physical changes. So in closing our lead up race, producing a hay odour smell into the lead up race, the net result is that the cattle generally move up freely um, themselves with pretty minimal encouragement. We don't feel we're ever there. We, we, it's, a, it's an area of ongoing improvement and uh, taking a similar approach throughout the, um, the supply chain with our properties. And so why is that important? We don't want to be causing pain to other animals. So that's, I guess, the most important reason. It's also important because our consumers and our customers ex expected of us. Consumers in general don't want to be thinking of the meat industry as an industry that harms animals and causes pain. So there's also eating quality benefits. I guess it's secondary, but it also is important. A stressed animal is never going to eat as well as one that's not stressed. So there's no good reason not to do good animal welfare. Looking through the processing facility and meeting different team members, it was incredible to see the scale and production of this operation. One person we spoke to who stood out is yet another individual who has progressed their careers through Harvest Road. So I'm the production and planning manager for Slaughter and Bone. Myself and my team are the middle man between livestock, sales, dispatch, the production team, and we try and get everything out as safely and cost-effective and efficiently as possible. And so what yeah. kind of role did you come into the industry in? Literally baseline. So I started just on the floor, understanding process, and then I started packing on the sausage line, started supervising, doing efficiencies, and then I was pulled into planning. I thought I was terrible at maths and everything from school, but it turns out I'm not actually that bad when I want to apply myself. Now I'm heading more into the operations space and back into the hands-on side of things a bit more, which I'm really liking. What's a stigma that you'd love to see change about the industry and actually the opportunity? Yeah. So being a woman, I think the biggest stigma that I would like to change is that women can't do it and don't belong here. There's none of that here, but there, there is quite a bit in the industry. There is something for everyone. So whether it's your education, your gender, your cultural stuff, your religion, anything is possible within the meat industry. And I think that the other thing is that meat works is a terrible, dirty, horrible place to work. It's just not. It's welcoming um, and it's just boundless. Now, as impressive as a completely vertically integrated beef supply chain is, there's no way that we're coming all the way over to Western Australia and not checking out the other side of the business. 
It's their aquaculture brand, Lewin Coast. And this story starts in Albany with Rob. Where we are based here, we're the only oyster producer in Western Australia, so we are start to finish. So we have hatchery production, juvenile, nursery, full grow out, processing, grading, the whole lot is done here. And in terms of your involvement in the aquaculture industry, what's that been like? I actually started in Finfish. I wanted somewhere where I could still I use my science training, but also work on the water. So we played around with mussels, very challenging. And then we moved into the coir oyster and the rock oyster. And then, yeah, that's where I sort of got my, got my taste for the region. And so you'd had a crack, you built up a fair old skill set. How did the opportunity with Harvest Road come about? We knew we could do this. We knew we had something here. We just needed someone with the appetite and the resource. We were lucky enough to be introduced to Justin. Harvest Road's taken it on and it's just gone flat out. And for you, like, what does that mean? You've, have you still got the same aspirations? Or that? Oh, for sure. No, it's, um, personally, it's been fantastic because, you know, what we're doing right now is exactly what, you know, wanted to do. The team has been able to fund it properly, have that trust and belief to do it the way we think it needs to be done and been let to run with it. So yeah, it's unreal. As far as enthusiasm and passion for what they're doing, Rob certainly is hard to go past. Someone else that we spent a lot of time getting to know is Justin Welsh, the Chief Operating Officer for Aquaculture, whose excitement and dedication to the aquaculture industry is infectious. Tell me a little bit about the products and the spread of the business. So we've got our rock oysters, the Albany rock oysters, really unique. It's got a very complex flavor profile. And then because we like a challenge, we brought a brand new seafood category to the market in the Akoya. And that's another one that's really heavily relying on new science and new technology to, to grow because there is no off the shelf solution for it. You guys go from Carnarvon down here to Albany. So why are those different areas important for the product? Yeah, it's, it's one of the greatest benefits of WA. I mean, we've got this massive, expansive coastline, right? That means it stretches across a number of different climates and regions. Tanavan is just this really fantastic environment for growing young oysters. The water's warm, so they can grow all year round, so it's really great. And then down in Albany, you just have that really beautiful, crisp, cold water. So it lets us kind of harness that and develop a beautiful flavor profile in our rock oysters. When we were in Carnarvon, we had the opportunity to check out the nursery farm. It's on the outskirts of town, we met with Blake to find out more about it. What we have up here in Carnarvon is like a nursery farm. So we'll receive oysters from the hatchery down in Albany. And our goal is to grow them up to about 20 to 25 mil and then send them back down to Albany. So what does it look like day to day or like week to week out here? It's pretty much just grading, bringing oysters in, grading them and putting them back out. These oysters are growing at all different sizes. So we want to separate the larger oysters from the smaller oysters. They tend to get smothered in the cages. So if we can bring them in, get rid of those larger oysters and give the smaller oysters plenty of room to grow, it just gives them like that kickstart to grow that nice shell shape. So if we can have them up here and give them a really good kickstart to life, give them a good shape, start them off nice and produce like a nice 50 cent piece oyster and send them down to Albany, we can really give them a good start to their lives. Tell us about how you guys are getting more involved in the local community and sharing the story of what happens out here on the water. Yeah, well, my partner's a school teacher at the local primary school, so we've had excursions out to the farm. The school actually runs an aquaculture program, so we've had the kids come into the shed and help us with the grading and learn a lot from different baskets and all that, so yeah, they like it. Do you think you've got some future oyster farmers coming through the ranks? Yeah, definitely. There was a lot of kids that showed interest, and like the kids in Carnarvon grow up on the water. They're always out fishing and outdoorsy sort of stuff, so um, when they heard they can do this sort of stuff for work yeah they got really excited rob in terms of the people that you guys have in your business like what kind of backgrounds and skill sets have you guys got yeah we've got a pretty diverse crew we've got guys with phds right down to ex-tradies laborers general farm hands is it a challenge getting the right people it is yeah people have in their mind sometimes this romantic image of being an oyster farmer it's pretty nice today but not for everybody and we have had people come and give it a taste and you know and walk away and that's fine. Um, we try to do a bit of an immersion day with them. Come out and actually spend a day with the team, get wet, get dirty, feel out all the different areas of the business. And then we decide, you know, for us, if it's a fit, or for the team, if it's a fit, and for them, if it's a fit. And so when it comes to the agriculture lens, there's lots of history that comes with it. What are the things that really underpin the agriculture business? 
Yeah, our aquaculture business is really underpinned by sustainability. It's it's why we started it. It's why a lot of our team are so passionate about what we're doing. Being able to produce really great seafood from the ocean with having absolutely no impact it is so important for us. And you know, even now there's there's research out there showing that especially shellfish aquaculture is actually regenerative. So we're healing and growing the ecosystems as we're producing food for people, which is a great story. You guys are already carbon neutral, which is pretty unique. Like, how did you actually achieve it? Yeah, so it's we're looking we're always looking for proof points and how we can really push the boundaries on sustainability. So it was a really great one where we could actually have a, an independent certification of some of the sustainability initiatives we have within the business. Is a combination of looking at our practices and how we're farming quite critically and sort of saying, right, how can we cut down our emissions? Where are the big emitters? How can we change that? And what technologies are available to change that? And once we've stripped everything we possibly can from an emissions perspective out of the business, then it's looking at, oh yeah, who can we partner with? What really great opportunities are there for some offsets? And then how do we move even beyond that and just get rid of the need for offsets? It was incredible to meet the team and see the operations from the Pilbara down to Albany. As we headed back to Perth, we caught up with Paul Slaughter, the Chief Executive Officer, to find out from him where they've come from and what the future looks like. Paul, we're, we're back in Perth. We've been across WA looking at all the different Harvest Road businesses and meeting all the different people that you guys have. It's, it's been incredible. What do you think has been the success of Harvest Road to date? Uh, to date, um, there's no doubt it's about our people. Very, very diverse mix of talented and passionate people. Underpinning that is our values. We're very values-based organisations. So our people really buy into the values and philosophies. And it's passion and it, it, it oozes through our people. You've done a lot to date. What does the future look like? Our vision is to take Australia's best sustainable produce to the world. A lot of our investment and momentum has been built out of that beef business. And more recently, it's been an aquaculture business that has really merged into an Australian leader in rock oysters. And then you underpin that with our horticulture is grown on one of our own stations. But it's the connection of these food groups and how they work together in forming a total plate solution. What are some of the headwinds that you guys will face? We see it more as an opportunity than a, than a headwind. The investments we're making in methane reduction strategies, how we're putting back into soil through sequestration, little things like how we're managing water and cattle productivity, even the effectiveness of the feedlot, all these things combined create a really strong story behind our ESG movement. In terms of true headwinds, things like cattle markets are very volatile at the moment. We've got uh, extreme pressure on cattle prices. Growth's a lovely opportunity to have, but it also creates its own set of unique challenges. The last few days have been incredible. From the paint-like landscapes of the Pilbara, to the bluest of blues of Albany. I'm leaving this trip with a real appreciation for Harvest Road's approach to their people. It was noticeable from our first interactions that they got on well with each other, and more importantly, that they believed in the vision and what it was going to take to achieve it. With such a diverse business, I loved how their team get to cross-pollinate to solve challenges and maximise opportunities together. When it comes to sustainability, they spoke about legacy and they want to see their properties thriving for another 100 years for their grandchildren's children. This is Aussie Ag.